bummed that we couldn't be together at camp this year, but for virtual camp, I've made a painting tutorial video for you to follow at home. I've decided to paint the wishing tree because I think it's one of the most special places at camp, and this year my wish is that we all stay healthy so we can be back together at camp next year. All right, so now we're ready to set up our area for painting. Um, the first thing you should do is make sure that you are on a flat surface like a table and you should cover it up with something, maybe newspaper, have someone in your house help you cover up this area because you don't want to get any paint on the table that you're working at. Also, if you're wearing nice clothes that you love and you'd be devastated if you get paint on them, pause this video and go change because acrylic paint does not come out in the washing machine. So make sure you roll those sleeves up. All right, so in your boxes that were sent to your house, you'll find different colors of paint. Yours are in a little cup. Mine I just put on this fancy paint paper, but you'll have yellow, blue, orange, black, and white. You can leave them in your cups. That'll be fine. You'll also find a paper plate. That will be our palette. Mine is a glass palette, but your paper plate will work just fine. This is where we're going to mix different colors for our painting. You'll also find a cup. This will be for your water, where you will um, wash off your paintbrushes. You'll find a package of paintbrushes. We'll have lots of different sizes. I have a whole lot at my house and mine might look a little bit different than yours, but I'll tell you which ones will work best throughout the whole video. Um, and then we all, also make sure you have any kind of paper towel or napkin available, maybe like an old rag, something that you don't mind getting dirty that could be helpful throughout our painting. And then finally, you have a canvas. Mine is just a little bit smaller. I'm working with what I have at home so I don't have to go outside. Um, so mine will be a little bit smaller, but that will be just fine. All right, so we are ready to start our painting. We're gonna start with this flat paintbrush. Um, the larger the better. If you have one in your package, go ahead and grab that one out. And then on our palette, we're gonna make our first color. I'm first going to scoop up some white with my paintbrush, just kind of put it right on my palette. And then I'm going to put a little bit of yellow and I'm gonna start mixing that together to make a light yellow, kind of like a pastel. If at any time during this video you feel like you're falling behind, you can go ahead and pause it so you can catch up with me. I'm gonna try not to go too fast. So once we have that nice pastel yellow, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my canvas. I'm starting with my canvas horizontal, long ways. And I'm gonna bring my water a little bit closer. I like to get my paintbrush a little bit wet, even with paint on it, just to help the uh, paint move better on the canvas. So we're gonna start with that, kind of like our sunbeam in the middle. Not quite the middle, I'm a little bit off to the side. So we've got that, kind of like a stripe on there. Next, I'm gonna move this over again. I'm really, I'm gonna grab some more white to put on my palette. And then I'm gonna grab some orange with my paintbrush. I'm gonna mix those two together, kind of make a pastel orange, so much, much lighter. And I'm gonna get my paintbrush wet again. And then I'm gonna go along the sides of this yellow. I kind of like to blend it in together. And I like to get any excess paint off of my brush, sometimes using a clean brush to blend those colors together to make a nice sunset look on here. Um, this is a good time to think about the sides on our paintings too. If you would like, you can go down and paint the sides, or you can just ignore them while we're painting and paint them at the very end. I think that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so now we've got our yellow and orange. 
I'm gonna go ahead and make our next color, which will be a lighter blue. So I'm scooping more white onto my palette. And now I'm scooping some, some blue to make a nice light blue. going right up against the side I like to kind of start in the middle so we can kind of blend it together and again I'm gonna wash off my paintbrush and get that clean brush to start blending them together you might see a little bit of green happening where orange and blue meet with each other I think that looks very cool side as well right here and again washing off that paintbrush and my water Let's use that clean brush to kind of blend it together make that interesting color right there that green I think that looks awesome and then I have this last section right here I'm gonna go straight for the dark blue in the cup and kind of put a darker color in there to blend it in. Kind of like an ombre. And then there's our background. Um, now it's a good time if you want to, to take a little break because we're gonna want this to dry before we add our next step. All right, now we're ready for the next step. I'm switching to a smaller paintbrush, a kind of like a small round paintbrush or a medium round brush for this next step. We are going to be making the ground or the grass, you can kind of think about it. First, we're gonna use black paint for this part. And I'm gonna start down here at this corner and just kind of make like a hill. Some of my spots are a little bit wet still, but that's okay. Black paint covers everything. And then we're just gonna go ahead and fill in this whole entire hill with our black paint. Remember to do that edge if you're painting your edges throughout the video. that's okay because eventually we will be adding some grass. And then I'm going to go ahead and wash that paintbrush off once I have that cup painted in. All right, for the next part, we are going to start making our tree. So we need to create a new color. I'm using a larger round paintbrush for this one. And we're gonna make a darker kind of green. So first I'm going to use my uh, large brush. I am gonna get it a little bit wet before I put paint on it. I think it just works a little bit better if your paintbrush is pretty wet. And then I'm going to scoop up some yellow to put on my palette. I'm gonna put a little bit on there. And then if you've taken art class, you know that we're going to use blue to mix with the yellow to make green. I'm not grabbing a whole bunch since blue is a darker color. I'm just kind of, kind of like covering my brush with it. And then remember, you can always add more to make that color. 
So I'm going to go ahead and add it right into our yellow and move it around. Make that nice green color for our wishing tree. This isn't quite as dark as I'd like it, so I'm going to grab a little bit more blue. You can make yours as dark as you'd like. Remember, this is your painting. It's looking pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna put this paintbrush in the water, kind of swish it around to clean it off a little bit. And I'm going to grab a smaller round paintbrush. This one's pretty, pretty small before our leaves. And with this, we're going to kind of do a different technique where you hold the paintbrush vertical to the canvas and kind of poke or dab little colors around. Um, I'm not pressing too hard and I'm not being very specific about where I'm going because these are going to be the leaves kind of in the background of our tree. So I'm going to start up in this corner and I'm just going to see if I can kind of like dab and just do kind of polka dots. It's almost like an impressionist style of painting. And I think about our tree kind of um, hangs low to the ground at camp unless they trim it, but I'm gonna make It hang low kind of like years past and I'm gonna go ahead and Fill that whole top with Different Spots in our tree hanging I might make this one a little bit longer Adding more paint anytime it gets kind of dry. All the way to the edge because it's kind of like a close-up. Fill in any spots. We can leave some spots of the background showing in our green. Kind of think about a tree that we'd see outside. We can see the sky through the leaves sometimes. And then that's our background layer of our leaves. All right, our next step is to make the trunk of our tree. I'm using the small paintbrush again that we just used for the green. I've cleaned it off really well before I start this part. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some black paint right onto my brush and start with our tree trunk. So the best part about trees is that they're all lumpy and funny shaped anyway, so it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and start mine down here and just kind of do the outline of the shape I want. So I think go this way, I'm going to add a little bit more paint to my brush and then I think I'll do a branch that goes way up high up here. And I'm just kind of being loose. My paint isn't totally dry. That's okay because we'll go back over with our black paint to cover it in. Being 
very loose with my brush strokes. I'm not too worried. Trees are fun to paint because they're loosey goosey. Um, I think I'll add another branch that goes up this way. If you have any ideas to add your branches in different places, that's a great thing to do. It doesn't have to look exactly like mine, or it can, whatever you would like to do. You are the artist. to add little little branches on here too. Think about how many branches our trees actually have outside. Thousands. Add a couple, couple little detail ones. So now I have the outline of my tree painted and I'm going to go ahead and use my paintbrush and paint the entire inside of this black. I'm going to be careful around my edges. And I'm really going to take my time and make sure that I get all of the spots in there because if you go quick you can kind of see a little bit of blue or yellow in there but I'm going to make sure I get it all. accidentally go outside of the lines that's okay you can always just make the tree a little bit lumpy right there and it will look just fine So once your tree is painted in, go ahead and just wash your paintbrush off and let it dry for a little bit. Not too long. The acrylic dries quickly and then we'll move on to the next step. Oops, I almost forgot that we can use this small paintbrush to add the grass on our hill. Almost forgot about that. So I'm going to go ahead and put more paint on my paintbrush and add some grass along this hill on our painting to make it a little bit more interesting, add some texture to our painting. So I'm using our smallest paintbrush again, and I'm going to go kind of fast and random for the grass. So you don't want it to look too specific. I think it'll look cool when it's kind of random. So I'm using the tip of my paintbrush and I'm making quick movements up and down and adding more paint every time it starts to look 
a little bit dry, I'll add a few long strands of grass, more paint. Look like it's a nice field of grass. Someone hasn't mowed in a while, nice and long. I like to add paint as soon as it starts looking dry to get that nice dark line. Go over any parts that don't look dark enough. wash my paintbrush off and then we'll move on to All right, my small paintbrush is clean I'm going to going to use a large round paintbrush for this next step it's cleaned off um, I'm gonna bring my palette over and we're gonna make a lighter green and to do that I'm just gonna scoop up some white move it over to the palette make sure you don't get any on your canvas and I'm gonna put it right on that spot where we already made dark green and just start mixing it in a little bit it might look a little bit too light. That's okay. We can go ahead and dip in. I kind of just dipped it right in there. Put some more yellow in there. Get a little bit of blue, not a lot. It's, we do not need a lot. Such a small amount. I'm gonna mix that in to make that light green. I think I actually had too much blue, so I'm going to go ahead and grab more yellow. I'm going to keep mixing until I have a light green that I like. Uh, right next to my light green, I'm also kind of going to make like a medium green. So we got our darkest green on here and our lightest. I want something right in between too, so I'm going to go ahead. I'll just put it right next to it. It's okay if it touches. Our little bit of blue. Mix that up. I may add a little bit more blue to that, make it a little bit darker. perfect color and that's looking pretty good so now we've got dark green light green and like a medium green so I'm gonna go ahead and wash this paintbrush off and then I'm gonna trade it for my small brush again with our small brush we're going to be using the same technique that we did for our dark le leaves um, holding it vertical and kind of dabbing it around our canvas. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some of our 
light green to start and this is going to go right over some of our leaves to give it kind of the depth and texture that we want. So I'm going to go ahead and start in this corner and go a little bit crazy with it. <clears throat> and this part's fun because I like to switch from light green to medium green and even add some white in while I'm dabbing all of the leaves on. So I just use light green, now I'm going to switch to my medium green and just kind of mix it in together in there. And I think it's cool when you kind of make new colors on accident. Using my medium green and I might, maybe I'll add a new little strand here that's hanging down. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of white in here too, right on top. Those trees look really, really interesting. Remember, we're not pressing down too hard. Our paintbrush shouldn't be spraying out when we press down. Just a perfect amount of pressure. We're gonna go ahead and cover up some of the branches in some spots to give our painting depth. White in there. And I'm gonna go with our medium green for right here. I'm gonna have this one come down right in front of our trunk. Oop, I got a little bit of black. See right there, my paint, my black paint was still a little bit wet, but that's okay if that happens to you. Go ahead and scoop just like a little bit extra green and Put it on a little bit thicker right over those spots and it will help cover up that accident. Happy accidents. That will look fine. There we go, we can't even tell. Go ahead and use some white on top of that too. I'm not really washing my paintbrush off between each color I pick up. It's kind of fun to mix them. And keep adding those colors on. Another thing you could do if you'd like is to dip your paintbrush in a little bit of yellow paint and add that inside of some of our spots. Think about how many different colors our leaves can be. Interesting to see multiple colors in our green leaves. I'm going to wipe my paintbrush off with my paper towel. I feel like I have a lot of paint on there. If it ever feels kind of thick and goopy, you can wipe it off at any time. Go with more medium green over here. I'll make this branch really long.
over right here. I don't really want to see the black through my leaves, so that's when I like to use white in those spots. It kind of masks the dark tree branch under there. And once you think your leaves look perfect, that's when you can stop. I think mine are looking pretty good. If you want, you can keep going and add more. You can add more different hanging down branches too if you'd like. Um, but I think mine's looking good like this. So I'm gonna wash that paintbrush off. I almost forgot about a step. I'm gonna add some texture to the bark of our tree. To do that, I'm gonna scoop up some white paint and put it on my palette. I'm gonna find a clean spot, maybe this little corner over here. Then I'm gonna just dip my brush into black. Not a lot on there and mix it in with that white and make a gray color. And I'm gonna add a little bit more black to make a darker gray. Maybe some more. All right, now that I have that darker gray, I'm gonna wipe the excess paint off from mixing off of my brush and then just get a little bit on my small brush and I'm gonna go ahead and just add some texture lines to our tree. I'm not going to go over the leaves I'm kind of pick it up and go around them. I'm just going to add a few. I'm going to be a little bit random with my lines. Move my palette over. I'll add some up here. Get some more paint on my brush. I'll add a couple to this branch as well. helps our tree look a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna wash my brush off now. For our very last step, I'm still using this small paintbrush. I'm going to add some glow sticks to our wishing tree, just like we do at camp. Um, and for this, I'm just going to use the color right out of the cup. So I've put some orange on my paintbrush with my small little brush, and I'm gonna go ahead and just add these little glow stick lines. And you can add some glow sticks to yours if you would like to, or you could leave it without. Depends on what you like. Glow sticks are my favorite part of the wishing tree. They look so pretty when we put them all up there. I have to make sure we get the ones up high too, because I know some of you throw them up there to get the highest glow stick on the wishing tree. I'm gonna add them in kind of random spots throughout. I'm gonna wash my brush off. And then I'm going to use that dark blue right from the cup. Dark blue. And put them on some different spots. my brush off. I think I'll wipe it off with my paper towel as well. Then I'm going to use yellow next. Straight from the cup. Yellow is a lighter color than blue so I'm kind of going to add a couple layers on this one just to make sure nice and bright. I can do a yellow right here too. Again, I'm going to do a couple of layers. 
first to get that dark layer behind. And then I think my last one, I'll wash off that brush and then do some white glow sticks. and wash that small paintbrush off and if you didn't paint your edges while we were painting this would be a good time for you to choose a color to do that I would use your wide flat paintbrush choose the color that you would like to be your edge I chose black and then you can just carefully go around that edge fill it in on all four sides. This will make it look nice, especially if you plan on hanging this up on a wall. You might want to do a couple of layers to make sure it's a nice dark color. Um, this is also a great time to sign your painting. I'm going to go ahead and use my small paintbrush and I'm gonna put it in the bottom corner down here. I like to just put my initials because my name's a little bit too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put M, P, and then I also like to add year. So I remember years from now when I did that. It might be a little bit tiny, 20, 20. If you don't want to add your signature to the front of your painting, you can go ahead and flip it on the back and maybe put it on the wood or on the canvas on the back of your painting, just so you remember when we did this. And then there's our wishing tree. Thank you so much for following along with my paint tutorial video. I thought Pancake should make an appearance too. I'm tricking her and holding her a uh, treat in front of the camera so she'll look. Um, send us pictures of your painting when you're all finished and thank you.